On Friday, Russia, Iran and China conducted naval drills in the northern Indian Ocean, not far from the world's energy choke point, the Strait of Hormuz. This wasn't the first time the three countries held maritime exercises, but the most recent ones came amid heightened tensions with the U.S. Dubbed the 2022 Marine Security Belt, they involved more than a dozen ships conducting live fire and rescue drills. China's defense ministry said it would deepen cooperation between the three navies. Although not naming a specific country, it was clear who the exercises were aimed at. Just one year into Joe Biden's presidency, the U.S. is seeing greater challenges from Russia, Iran and China. Tensions are high in Eastern Europe as a Russian troop buildup on Ukraine's border is raising fears of a wider conflict. Nuclear talks with Iran have stalled as the country's new hardline president takes a tougher line with Washington. And tensions are rising between China and the U.S. over Washington's support for Taiwan and Beijing's alleged human rights abuses. And to discuss where these tensions could be headed, I'm joined now from Washington, D.C. by Michael Doran. He is a senior fellow at the Hudson Institute. And from Brussels, Eleonora Tafura. She is a research fellow at the Russia Caucasus and Central Asia Center of ISPI, a political and security think tank. A warm welcome to you both. Thank you very much for joining me on Straight Talk. So, Eleonora, what's the main motivation behind this latest naval uh, drills between Russia, Iran and China. Who was that aimed at and what message was it trying to send? The message is very clear. It's a message of unity that follows the uh, initial, the, um, the formal uh, start of, uh, of the membership uh, uh, negotiation for Iran to the CSCO, um, so to the Shanghai Cooperation Agreement. So yeah. the aim is to show that uh, the countries are united, that they are cooperating. Some observers uh, see uh, the uh, organization as a, as a purely formal one, but still the message uh, is clear and symbols uh, and images count. So, Michael, given these naval drills and that Ivan, just Eleanor mentioned, uh, joined a Shanghai cooperation organization just recently with China and Russia are the biggest members. Do you agree this is a coordinated move to confront U.S. on multiple fronts? Uh, I completely agree. Um, in, in Tehran uh, now, senior officials are openly talking uh, about a triangle alliance uh, among uh, Russia, China, and Iran. Um, and and I, I think that uh, we should listen to that language and take it, uh, take it very seriously. There's a tripartite effort to uh, undermine the American-led world order. Mm -hmm. But do you believe that these countries uh, will be able to overcome their differences? Uh, there are significant differences in specific areas. So, for example, Iran and Russia don't agree about the South Caucasus. Russia mm -hmm. wants Iran to, to have no part in that. Uh, there are tensions between Russia and Iran in, um, in Syria. But they all share the same goal, the strategic goal of uh, uh, undermining the American-led order. So, Eleanor, where do you think this alliance is headed? I mean, what will the uh, U.S. react to this? And are we likely to see more countries, maybe from the region, to join this unofficial alliance? Well, I believe that um, the three countries... Um, are able to overcome their difference because they speak the same language. And it's not just the opposition to the Western-led order uh, that unite them, but it's also like pure interests. And so they, they see they can cooperate, they have uh, uh, objectives uh, to achieve, and they have uh, you know, the, the interest to, um, to, to do that. Um, in terms of, uh, of the capability for them to do it, I'm, I'm more skeptical. Also because, as I mentioned, uh, this uh, organization uh, is not as uh, powerful as uh, 
China and Russia would would like it to be. And uh, when it comes to um, security, uh, uh, urgent security crisis, uh, other organizations in the region uh, have proven more effective, uh, such as the CSDO. Uh, we saw that in Afghanistan, in, uh, in Kazakhstan. Kazakhstan. Sorry. Yes. Yes. So, uh, Michael, what's your take on that? How do you think the U.S. will react to this alliance? Uh, well, so far, the U.S. Uh, uh, is behaving as if it doesn't exist. Uh, you know, on last Friday, uh, uh, Secretary of State Blinken was in Geneva meeting with Foreign Minister Lavrov and talking about how the two were cooperating together on the Iran nuclear question at the same moment that these uh, naval drills were beginning, yeah. uh, these cooperative naval drills were, were, were beginning. As long as the United States behaves like that, then the um, the vulnerabilities and the weaknesses, the deficiencies that uh, Eleonora mentioned will not be exploited effectively. Uh, the United States needs to actually have a strategy for yeah. separating these powers. So, Eleonora, where do China and Iran stand in the face of a possible invasion of Ukraine? Do they support the uh, Russian claims? Well, uh, China is a very um, um, important case, uh, of course, of, uh, you know, like a cooperation uh, with Russia in uh, even in cases where uh, the two countries have a different stance because China uh, it's not happy, it was not happy about the annexation of Crimea in 2014, but it didn't, uh, uh, of course, uh, criticize Russia. And uh, uh, even though the, the annexation broke the, um, the sovereignty of another country, which uh, for, for China is, is very important, is paramount for mm -hmm. its foreign policy. Uh, so I think both Iran and Russia and uh, China um, uh, let's say, observed uh, the situation very, very closely, but didn't uh, really criticize Russia for any of its moves. So Iran is also a big energy exporter and China is a, a big uh, customer. Uh, Michael, how would a possible Russian operation in Ukraine and the sanctions that followed impact uh, global energy supplies and energy geopolitics? Well, uh, the question is, will the United States actually be able to sanction uh, Russia to the extent that it is threatening? And that's because Germany has is dependent on Russian gas over 40 uh, percent, I think close to 50 percent of, of uh, German uh, 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 gas comes from Russia. If the United States were to sanction the Russian economy completely, mm -hmm. it would cut off those supplies and Germany would freeze in the winter. Now, the U.S. is quickly running around the world looking for LNG supplies, but that's very hard to do, uh, that, that, could, that could fill in, but that's very hard to do on short notice. Mm -hmm. So I'm a little bit skeptical that this is actually going to happen um, to the extent that is being threatened. Yeah, so if we get back to Ivan Eleonora, how has the YC administration, since assuming uh, power, shifted its uh, policies on Russia? And why do you think that it has chosen to look to the East more and deepen its cooperation with Russia as well as China? Uh, you mean Iran cooperated more with China and, and uh, Russia? Well, I don't think it has um, many alternatives. Uh, Iran suffers from uh, the isolation uh, that uh, followed, especially after the um, the end of the uh, JCPOA. So um, I think uh, China and Russia were able to offer um, cooperation uh, platforms uh, that uh, that would uh, not exclude Iran and that would. Uh, uh, allow it to uh, to show uh, that it's not that isolated anymore. So I think this uh, cooperation will only increase uh, because even if the uh, nuclear deal will be, uh, you know, put uh, together um, again, I don't I don't believe uh, uh, Iran uh, can can actually boast um, a very powerful network of of relations internationally. So, Michael, what's the U.S.'s take on that? Could this latest shove of uh, unity derail uh, Iran's already fragile nuclear talks with the West? Um, I, I think that uh, Russia and China are covering for Iran. Uh, last Friday, when, uh, when Lavrov met with Blinken, uh, he uh, uh, suggested an interim deal. Uh, and what is an interim deal? It means that, uh, that Iran will reduce stockpiles somewhat in, re in return for sanctions relief. 
And the bottom line there is that uh, Iran will remain a threshold nuclear power, which it is right now. Uh, within a very short period of time, it will have enough fissile material. It can make enough fissile material for it to build a bomb. And it will get sanctions relief. So the re so the the nuclear blackmail will continue, and Iran will grow will grow stronger. That's what Russia and China want at the moment. Mm, so, Eleanor, what's your take on it? Can Russia and China help offset Iran's losses? It's likely to suffer if nuclear talks uh, collapse once again. Can it afford walking away from the talks? Well, I don't. I don't believe actually they can uh, offset completely the um, uh, the the losses for Iran. Uh, those would be very important. Also, let's not forget that uh, Russia uh, is also uh, a big oil exporter. So Iran could could actually be a competitor uh, in its field. Uh, I think. Um, Russia and China will try uh, to uh, bolster their cooperation with Iran, also to um, make a point and uh, you know to uh, bother the West. But also uh, the uh, limits of this cooperation uh, are, are also clear. Yeah. So, uh, Michael, given all these developments, how is the Western alliance dealing with this Eastern axis? I don't. I don't see a Western alliance that's really focused on it as a strategic problem. I I agree with every word that uh, Eleanor said. In theory, that is to say, if the United States actually had a strategy to to blow, to push these uh, powers apart, to exploit the tensions between them, and so on, then we would be in a good position. But look at on the question of energy. The policy of the Biden administration is to push. Uh, electrification and uh, uh, to move away from fossil fuels as much as possible everywhere in the Western world, which basically hands the energy markets to the to to the Russians and the uh, the Iranians. It's it's uh, it's shocking, really. All right, Eleonora, Michael. Unfortunately, we'll have to leave it here. Thank you very much for joining me on Straight Talk.